Now discussing electroplating, uh, the previous two examples that we just did, they are exactly examples of electroplating. There's nothing new. If you observe carefully, your anode is dissolving when you're using active electrodes. This silver ends up as silver ions in the electrolyte and that silver ion then gets attracted to the cathode and gets deposited as silver metal. So this cathode would then start having a layer of silver metal on top of it. If we simply replace this cathode by any other object, it can be a spoon, it could be any metal object, because the cathode, it doesn't matter which material this cathode is made out of, it's not going to gain electrons from the battery, metals never gain electrons. So if you put a spoon over here instead, this silver would get deposited on that spoon and it would have a covering of silver on top of it. So this is the basic idea of electroplating, but there are certain rules that we need to follow. And we will simplify what electroplating is. The first rule is that the metal that you want an object to be electroplated with, that should be the anode. So the electro plating metal is the it is the anode a second rule the object that needs to be electroplated is always placed at cathode and our third rule is the third rule is that the electrolyte should contain the ion of the electroplating metal which basically means that you don't want any other ions in the electrolyte, otherwise they would be competing for uh, a spot at the cathode. So you don't want impurities coming over there. So let's start. Let's start with, uh, with an example. I want to, my task is coating a spoon with silver. I want silver all around it. Uh, which is basically electroplating a spoon with silver. Uh, let's draw a diagram. Now, I told you that the electroplating metal in this case is silver. So, and where should silver be placed? It should be placed at the anode. So, I place my silver at anode and I connect it to the positive terminal of the battery. So here's my AG, which is the positive electrode, the anode. I've placed it over there. The spoon should be at cathode. So I want the spoon to be at cathode. So let's say there's a rough diagram of a spoon. So that's my spoon. The battery would be sending electrons from this side and would be taking electrons away from the other side. My last third point of uh, was that the electrolyte should contain the ion of the electroplating metal. So we need silver ions in the electro electrolyte. And the easiest way to have silver ions in the electrolyte is you can have uh, a soluble silver salt, for example, AgNO3. Aqueous could be placed in this, and if you have AgNO3 aqueous, you would have how many ions? You'll have uh, Ag plus one ions at cathode, NO3 minus one ions at anode, and there would be two ions coming from water as well. One would be H plus one, and the other one would be OH minus one. Now let's try and figure out how electrolysis would proceed. First thing, what's going to happen at anode? 
the battery would try and take electrons at three options. It can either take electrons from NO3 minus one or OH minus one or since the electrode is made, made out of silver, it can take electrons from silver electrode. I told you that, uh, that the anode always dissolves. So it's the silver electrode that's going to lose electrons and when it loses an electron, it's going to form Ag plus one and it would become part of the solution. And when it becomes part of the solution, what happens at cathode? At cathode, these silver ions that become part of the solution are going to get attracted to the negative cathode. And when it gets attracted to the negative cathode, you have how many candidates? The battery is providing electro electrons. You have a spoon over there, which might gain electrons. It's made out of metals, and metals never gain electrons. So the spoon would never end up gaining electrons. You have Ag plus 1 over there at cathode, and you have H plus 1. And if you look at the reactive species, Ag plus 1 is the least reactive. So it's Ag plus 1 that ends up gaining electrons. And when it gains electrons, Ag plus 1 would gain one electron and it would form silver metal again. And if you observe carefully, what's happening is this silver line would then get deposited on the spoon. And as it gets deposited on the spoon, they, you are going to see a layer of silver forming on top of this spoon. And this is how electrolysis would proceed in this case. And the spoon would get electroplated with silver metal. Now doing another example of electroplating, we can uh, electroplate an object with copper. Now to electroplate an object with copper, and let's say we're trying to electroplate uh, a cooking utensil with copper. Uh, the rules for electroplating were, I'm going to draw the diagram first. Uh, this is my container or a simple beaker in which I'm going to uh, place an anode. And the first rule was that the anode must be made out of the electroplating metal. So this would be made out of copper. This is the anode. It's positive. It would be connected to the to the positive terminal of the battery. Similarly, we will have a cathode, and in this case, the cathode would be a cooking utensil, and let's say it's a spoon again. So this is a spoon, and this should be, our object should be the cathode. So the object is placed at the negative cathode, and then we're going to dip all of this in the electrolyte solution. And the electrolyte solution must contain an ion of the electroplating metal, which is copper in this case. Now we can use different electrolytes which have copper ions in them. It could be CuSO4 aqueous. Or let's put that in bracket. There could be other ions as well. These could be, you could have Cu uh, copper nitrate, which is also, which is also aqueous. So these are other uh, electrolytes that you can use in uh, electroplating. So, but we are using copper sulfate aqueous. So let's uh, look at copper sulfate aqueous. Copper sulfate aqueous is going to have uh, Cu plus two ions, and it's going to have SO4 minus two ions, SO4 minus two ions, and it's going to get attracted to the positive anode, whereas Cu plus two ions would get attracted to the negative cathode. Then since it's aqueous, you'll have two more ions. One would be H plus one, and the other one would be OH minus 1. The battery would be pulling electrons from this side and it would be giving electrons to the cathode. Now, um, quickly, if we uh, uh, write down the equations, what's going to happen at cathode and at anode. Now, the rules for active electrodes is that the anode always dissolves. The battery is trying to gain electrons and it has three candidates. One is OH minus one. That might lose an electron to the battery. You have SO4 minus two. And you have an anode which is made out of copper. So you have copper anode as a candidate as well. And since copper anode is the closest to the battery, it always 
loses electrons when it loses electrons it's going to lose two electrons it's going to form cu plus two ions so these cu this copper anode is going to dissolve and it's going to produce cu plus two ions and these cu plus two ions are going to get attracted to the negative cathode at cathode what's going to happen is uh, the battery is providing electrons so you have a metal object which might gain electrons but it's never going to gain electrons metals never form negative ions you have cu plus two and you have h plus one so you have two ions that might gain electrons and in this case it's going to be the least reactive one which is cu plus two so cu plus two would gain electrons it's going to gain electrons two electrons it's going to form cu Now, just like electroplating uh, uh, an object with copper, we can purify copper as well, and it's exactly the same concept as electroplating. The only difference here is that if you have a piece of impure copper, and we remember that the difference between electrolysis using active electrodes is that the anode dissolves. So you connect this impure comp copper to the positive terminal of the battery and make it the anode. So this is the positive anode and this is impure copper on this side so you have impure copper on the left hand side the anode and you have a piece of pure copper at the cathode so this is a piece of pure copper and we have already done the electrolysis uh, of copper sulfate using copper electrodes uh, quite a number of times now so the electrolyte must contain some uh, electrolyte that has copper ions in it so let's say we have CuSO4 aqueous and that would contain Cu plus 2 ions it would contain uh, H plus 1 ions which, will, which are going to get attracted to the negative terminal uh, on the other side SO4 minus 2 and OH minus 1 ions uh, are going to get attracted to the to the positive terminal so that's your electrolyte uh, now exactly the same concept the anode at the anode I'm not going to explain this in a lot of detail because we've already done this but the concept applies to purification as well uh, anode dissolves the battery is pulling electrons from the anode and since this is made out of copper so it's going to dissolve its copper is going to lose two electrons it's going to form Cu plus 2 at the other end at cathode The Cu plus 2 would then become part of the solution and it's going to get attracted to the negative cathode. And over there, the less reactive element is going to gain electrons, which in this case would be copper plus 2. You have copper plus 2 and H plus 1. That's going to gain 2 electrons and it's going to form Cu. So what's happening is this anode would dissolve and there would be a layer of pure copper depositing at the cathode. The impurities either remain at anode they either remain at anode or they become part of the electrolyte. So that, those are the two options for the impurities, but they do not get attracted to the cathode because the cathode is going to attract Cu plus 2. So you get a layer of pure copper on top of this, which keeps on growing. So this is how pure an impure copper gets converted into pure copper.